Well, once all the social distancing stuff is over and we're back out and about doing things with our friends and family, I thought I would show you a place this month that you can come to right in central Georgia that's gonna give you an opportunity to see some wildlife, both local and exotic, and have some fun with your friends. And I wanna introduce you to a lady that you might get a chance to see when you're here, and that's Miss Sharon Cornakeon. Did yes. I say that right? Yeah, it was perfect. Yes. That was really good. Got it. <laughs> this lady is in charge of all animals here at the Museum of Arts and Sciences, right here in Macon, right around the corner from the Georgia Farm Bureau home office. And Miss Sharon, you got a couple of friends behind you there that I want to tell the folks at home about. Tell me about these two friends and why they're here at this museum. Well, here at the museum, what's so interesting about this museum is that we do have a mini zoo. So mm. all of the animals here serve a huge purpose, education, education, education. We, we have a saying here at the museum, fear comes from lack of knowledge. Good. So the more that we can educate people about the animals that live around us here and in the world, the better off everybody is. And these guys here are what we call rucked lemurs. Okay. Uh, the larger one is a black and white rough lemur, then we have a red rough lemur. Uh, some of the interesting facts about them, number one, they are the number one pollinator over in the islands of Madagascar, just like huh. the honeybee is here because of that rough fur around their face. Okay. Um, also, they're on the seriously endangered species list. Wow. So right. we can talk about how important it is to know the animals around us, what we can do to protect them. Now, not only are these guys being exotic, but we've got some native animals that we're gonna take a look at next, the kind that come out at night that are very relevant to ag in Georgia. So let's walk together down there and show everybody at home these guys next. So let's do it. All right, so join me as we walk into this brand new bat cave here at the museum. And Miss Sharon, right off the bat, <clears throat> oh. I'd like to ask, <laughs> I'd like to ask you about. We're standing in this brand new exhibit. It's not open yet, but it will be soon. And I had mentioned to the folks at home a little bit ago about native bats and native species. However. You say this is not going to be a home for native bats. What are you going to put in here? Actually, what we're going to put in here, and we had thought about native bats originally, but because they're so small, yeah. we thought, well, we need something that is visibly you know, there that people can see yeah. a lot easier. So okay. we started researching bats and we came up with the African straw colored fruit bats. Wow. Uh, they eat a lot of the same things that a lot of our other animals eat. So feeding them is pretty easy. Uh, they're about nine inches tall and about a two and a half foot wingspan. Wow. So they'll okay. be really substantial in here and people will be able to see them very easily. That's gonna catch attention. People are gonna come in here and see and they're gonna be able to see along the outside here too. You had mentioned on this back wall, what's this gonna look like once they're in here? Well, the effect is when they walk in they'll feel like they're walking into the cave but that they're actually looking out of the cave it's going to be an African scene okay. which is where the bats are native to so um, it'll actually feel like they're looking out of the cave once that mural goes up there. Wow and I know that once they're in here you guys are going to take great care of them I, and I noticed this guy up here maybe not <laughs> cared for so well it's just a skeleton. We tape this around Halloween, so it's okay. If you're yeah, wondering. that's actually here for a thing, an event that we have tomorrow night. He's so. okay, looking a little thin, you know, but <laughs> let's venture into another aspect of this museum and show the folks at home before we wrap up about the mini zoo here. So let's go there next. Mm. Well, from the Bat Cave to the Mini Zoo, we're inside now at the Macon Museum of Arts and Sciences, and I'm standing here with Luke Daniel. Luke, you've got a friend. I was handed a friend. Tell me a little bit about the friend you have, and then tell me about who I have here. <laughs> yeah, so this is Miss Daisy. She's our albino Burmese python here at the museum. A long time ago, Burmese pythons actually used to be really popular pets. That said, the reason they were really popular pets is a lot of people would see a snake this, this big, they didn't know it would get this big. They'd see a yeah. snake about a foot and a half, two feet long, really pretty snake. They'd buy it, take it home, have no idea what kind of snake it was. That's what happened to Miss Daisy here. She was actually bought by a family here in Georgia. Took home, kept as a pet in a tier three ferret cage until they could no longer yeah. care for her mm. and brought her here to the museum when she got too big. And, yeah. and I just think about that, Luke, and somebody not knowing how big something like that gets. Now, I was told that this lady's name is Georgia. Mm -hmm. Tell me about Georgia, because you're a sweetie. Yeah, now Miss Georgia's actually Moluccan cockatoo, and she was actually sold from a PetSmart here in Macon, Georgia, mm. several years ago. People actually bought her home, I mean, actually brought her home and took her back to PetSmart three different times, mm. and then before taking her back to the museum. 
reason more with her is because she doesn't get, I mean, she's kind of a large bird, but she doesn't get too, too big. But the main reason with these guys is Moluccan cockatoos are a very kind of extreme bird. Um, for example, they can scream at about 135 decibels, oh which God, is about George. equal to a jet engine. Oh. And on top of that, she has a bite force of about 500 pounds per square inch. And now he tells now me this while I'm holding her, right? So Georgia, you're a sweetie. But, but I gotta ask you, so behind us, these little guys, tamarins, not native to Georgia, but why do y'all have those? Um, tamarins are basically, they're just, a, so these are called Geoffrey's tamarins. They're a small species of monkey coming from Central and South America. Mm. But a while back, their numbers weren't doing too great. So we actually got them here through a conservation project, trying to, you know, kind of breed them, get their numbers back up in the wild and everything. We did that through the state of Georgia several years ago. So wow. now we're down to, we used to have a lot more, now we're down to about four. Incredible. So Luke, what you all are doing at this museum, I just think the folks at home need to know about it, and I know they're going to feel so rewarded by being able to be part of this. Luke, thanks so much for being no with problem. us. And y'all, thanks so much for joining us again this month. Y'all know what to do. Georgia, we always tell people to go online to Facebook and check out the Farm Monitor Facebook page. And while you're there, you go over and you look at the Ranger Nick Facebook page and see what I got going on. And until next time, as we always say for the farm monitor, me and George are saying, enthusiasm is contagious, so pass it on. Y'all, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you back here next month. See ya.